and we're going to get our buddy here, Nate Schmidt, who has been a great add-on to the Crush Live Poker community. He developed the Solve for Live uh, charts that we use that, um, again, if you're CLP sub, we can tell you how to get those charts preloaded into Preflop Plus, which is that training app, and we can give you a code to get a discount. And if you're an existing subscriber and you want to um, sign up for the yearly, we can actually give you the app for free. You don't have to pay the first month and get the thing uh, loaded in there. And he's very, very active on Discord, and he's been a, a great, great addition to the community. And I asked him if he played any interesting hands this week because I wanted another caller. What's up, Nate? How's it going? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, good. How you doing, Bart? Nate, you didn't hear my intro of you? Yeah, yeah, I was oh, okay. on mute. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> so Nate plays out of what? Cincinnati, right? Yes, sir. And you will, you're going to play, uh, we're going to do a limp pot here, right? Because I wanted to get, I love limp pots. Yes, this is a limp pot here. Love me some limp pots. All right, so what's the setup here? All right, so this is 2-5. We're 900 effective. Okay. And I'm in the big blind with six of clubs, five of clubs. Okay. All right, so um, plus one, hijack, cut off the button, and small blind, all limp. Plus one, hijack, cut off, button, limp. You're in the big blind. Heroes in the big blind um, with six, five of clubs. And do you check your option here? Yeah, I check here. Now, um, I want to ask you something because you went over something on one of your videos or I think we might have talked about it in the uh, in that video that we did. Nate and I did a video together on his that's in the coursework on Solver, the Solver Live ranges. It's over in uh, Fast Track. You had an interesting uh, approach to sometimes raising in this spot out of the blind. Can you repeat that again? Having to do with what some smaller, sometimes checking medium pairs, but then raising smaller pairs to to sort of re uh, avoid getting cooler when deep. Yeah, so when it's extreme multiway like this, if you mm -hmm. raise your smaller pairs, mm -hmm. you can avoid getting coolered by, like, say, sixes, fives, things like that. But you can check your eights and nines because you'll be the one doing the coolering. So th does that assume that when you raise out of the blind, those guys are folding those hands? Sixes, things like that? So Yeah, you're trying to fold out fives. So fours, you're trying to raise and like get, those, get the sort of lower portion of the small pairs that might overset you out that's that's the thing yeah okay sure but you don't see a reason to necessarily raise here i mean this is kind of one of these ones where i think I, it's kind of akin to my approach to sometimes over limping where if there were only like two people in there you could i could even see like an even if you're in the big blind i could see um iso raising here but like if i was um if I was like on the button and a bunch of people limped in in front of me, I might just over limp here. You know what I'm saying? With five, six, yeah, clubs. for sure. I, um, I feel like it's just too light to uh, ISO here when the guys up front limp because when one of them calls, then everybody's coming into the hand with mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and you're just playing a massive hand with six, five in like the worst position, right? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five ways, so it's like twenty five. Okay. All right, so um, we go to the flop, $30 in a pot. No, it's six ways, small blinds into. Oh, okay, six ways. Yeah. 30 in a pot, and we get six of clubs, eight of hearts, four of clubs. Six of clubs, eight of hearts, four of clubs. Am I, doing, I thought you had five, six of clubs. I do have five, six of clubs. Uh, queen of clubs, eight of hearts, oh. four of clubs. I'm sorry. You did say six, though, right? <laughs> uh, yes, okay. I said six. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah. I'm right. So queen, queen eight, four, and you have a combo draw, but sort of ascendish combo draw, right? Yes. Got shot to a seven and a uh, small flush draw. Okay. So small blind checks, mm -hmm. um, and it's on us here. Do you have any uh, merit in betting here? Are you checking? I mean, I think you kind of know my approach a little bit to this where i like to usually take these hands especially when there are worse draws and we see like multi-way action and try to add a lot of sort of max full equity and this is you know clp term and content 
uh, reference attacking limb pots. It's kind of, it's a little bit similar to attacking the field better in a raise pot after the preflop raise or check. So usually the way that you're going to get the most fold equity here is by check raising. Uh, Cause if you just lead out a lot of the hands you want to fold, aren't going to fold. So, you know, if something happens where God forbid, if someone has a higher flush draw than you and they check it for some reason, then somebody bets and you raise, they're going to a lot of times you're going to clean it up. I mean, you want to get this hand heads up and I feel like you have a fair amount of fold equity. The only thing is, is that it's not so top pair dynamic. And what that's another term that I use top pair dynamic, meaning like top pairs not going to change all that much as opposed to if it was like nine, eight, four, you know what I mean? Or something, or like eight, four deuce. How about eight, four, eight, four deuce would be a double gutter, but that would be a perfect example. Eight, four deuce, two clubs, right? Top pair dynamic, meaning like an eight, you might get a bet fold from an eight on the flop and it's just not going to be a strong hand by the river usually. Whereas here, someone with queen jack might sort of just hold on. But I think I'm checking here with the intention of doing a lot of check raising depending on what happens in front of me. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I check. It checks to the cutoff who bets 15. Okay. So here we go. So let's count the people that have checked. So plus one hijack have checked. And obviously the small blind is checked and the small blind doesn't necessarily, I mean, it's not like a single raise pot where they're automatically checking to the preflop raiser. So we can, we can gain some info from that, but two right. people have checked. So now it's the cutoff and the button that haven't acted and the cutoff bets. How much is the cutoff bet? $15. Okay. So kind of, well, half, but kind of small. Okay. Right. And the button calls mm -hmm. small blind folds. And it's back to us. I mean, once you get a bet and a call, this is kind of like a preflop overlay. Definitely, if the small blind had called, that would even do this more often. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I want to check raise here. I do want to check raise here a lot. I, I think you've got a boatload of equity. The pot is like 60. If you went up to like 75 or 80, you actually only need to get everybody to fold right now, like 60% of the time for it to even be profitable. But then, of course, you get this whole future equity thing. And again, people don't like to play. Like, they get scared, I feel like, in a lot of limp pots where they don't want to play, like, big hands with one pair. You can have anything here, too, right? You got a free yeah. look. That's why it's so powerful. Because when you get a free look and you're entirely random, you can have any of the two pair. It's not like you V-pipped a hand where, you know, it's nine deuce three and you call the raise and the cutoff. You know, you're not going to have two pair on nine deuce three. But here, you can have anything. So I do like a check raise here quite a bit. Right, and I guess I just missed the check raise here. Um, I call, and then the um, hijack, everyone else folds. So did you think about check raising? I did think about check raising, and um, there's just not a ton of money to put a lot of risk in here, but it, it definitely makes sense to check raise here. Um, I actually checked with the intent of possibly check raising, um, so instead of leading out into the field, right. so everything you said on the fly by a hundred percent. And, and by the way, like, and when I say check with the intention of check raising, it's not always a check raise because something could happen in front of you that might make you fold too. Like if someone, if it went bet raise, you might just fold, right? Right. <laughs> right yeah. Right. Yeah. So it looks like the pot, um, pot 75, right? Yeah. And we we head to the turn mm -hmm. and we get the seven of hearts. Wow. So again, it's queen eight, four. Nate has five, six of clubs. He checked in the big blind multi-way. Just check calls. And now he hits Jin. So he's got the nuts here. Backdoor hearts come in. And obviously this is a very dynamic board where there's only certain cards that aren't... The, I mean, there's going to be a lot of nut changing cards here on the river, whether it's board pairs or making higher straights or, you know, flushing types of hands. I mean, you'd rather not see a club. But this is an interesting one here because like you're going to be first to act and you don't want it to get checked through. And the other thing that I will say and why I want to lead here a lot is because another thing about positional awareness and hand reading, if you take a look of, at the opponent on the button, let's say the button has some sort of draw, whether it's clubs or maybe he had jack 10, which is like a gut shot, which is now turns like a double gutter now too, right? Uh, is that right? Yeah. No, oh, no, right. I guess it's still, no, it's still a gutter. No, he just got a pair. Jack 10. Yeah, queen, eight, four, seven. When he calls and you overcall, put it this way, like because you overcalled the flop, 
the button, if it gets checked to them on the turn, is going to be more likely to check and take a card when they have a draw, as opposed to if it, if it were heads up, if you follow me. So because you overcalled, like if you or I were on the button, Nate, and we had called with some sort of light draw, you know, we would probably check through a lot here on the turn because the big blind overcalled, right? So, right. you know, you got to get through two people here and the big blind's got to have something here to overcall. So I don't want that to happen. So that's why I would probably do a lot of leading here. Right. Yeah. And uh, I lead 60 into 75 here. Okay. So what do you think about the size? I think it's fine. I mean, you could, I mean, you could just go full pot too, but okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually do think I can go full yeah. pot here and yeah. a little small. Um, cut off tank calls. Okay. And the but, uh, button folds. All right. So the button's out. The button is out. And now we are at 195, right? Yep, 195 heading into the river. So what do you think the cutoff has here? What's his range? I, limp, limp pot, right? Yes, I think the cutoff has um, a lot of queen X here. Uh, he could have queen eight even possibly, maybe. Uh, if he has sets, it's only like fours. He could maybe turn sets of sevens, but I think he has a lot of queen X um, and probably like offsuit Broadway queen X, to be honest. I mean, the other thing too is like, I think still people are going to be raising a lot with pocket fours here um, to your lead on this sort yes. of wet board. Cause a lot of people aren't going to just, you have to specifically have five, six of clubs specifically for this card to mean anything. Like even if I'm in there with pocket fours, unless it was a really good player leading, if somebody leads turn and let's say I had pocket fours, I'm not giving them five, six because it's only one combo and they would have to check over call the flop with it. There has to be some frequency of a check raise. There's just so many other hands that they can have. Right. Right. So maybe, and they obviously have clubs too. I'm sorry. Cut yeah. Down. Yeah. I'm just saying from the perspective of this guy having, you know, four, four, I think four, four does raise maybe some, you know, Queens up types of hands just call, but okay. So one ninety five to the river. Yes, 195 to the river, and we get the 10 of spades. So, 10 of spades comes in, and that slightly changes the nuts in the sense of um, there's two higher straights out there now in the form of jack nine and six nine. But of course, the only way that he can have those hands is if he has clubs, or I suppose. I can't give him a heart. It's not going to be six, nine of hearts. That's for sure. Cause he bet on the flop because it's queen of clubs, eight of hearts, four of clubs and six. Nine, I mean, excuse me, Jack nine of hearts. I mean, maybe once in a while, but really it looks like Jack nine of clubs is really the only thing that's really uh, possible for you to ever kind of lose to here in this spot. Right. And um, with us having the six of clubs, I completely eliminate six, nine. Here. Right, we can't have six, nine of clubs. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I bet 120 into 195 here. So Hero bets 120. And again, Hero started with 900 and he's put in, you know, he's got like 700 back, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And cutoff raises to 325. Now this is very, very interesting. So we just went over what you lose to. Pretty much only Jack Nine of Clubs, right? That's Correct. it. So you go 120, and you've got 700 back. 120, you know, like 195. So the pot's like 320, and then he raises to 325, so it's 625, and it's 120. I mean, excuse me, it's 220 for you to call 625, but then you've got another 700 back. Is that right? Yeah, I get another 700 back. So if you were to, say, think about bet three betting here, it would be like a pot size race. Am I just a little bit over a pot size race, something like that, where the guy would get about two to one here? Correct. Obviously, you're, that's what you're thinking about, Nate, right? Yes, that's we're tanking, thinking about raising here. So what is and he I, raising with? What is he raising the river with here? Okay, so he can raise with all of his two pair, any kind of sets. Obviously, he has the one combo, Jack-9. And we have to decide in this spot how much of that calls our raise, our three bet. And I think it boils down to how much two pair we think he calls with. What, like, like you think he's raising queen 10 at the end, you mean? I I think he would raise queen 10 here. 
Wow. Hmm. But uh, that's the, do we think he calls off Queen Tim? Well, I mean, here's the thing, fundamentally, right? Like, that's that's the real question. Like, and I go back to what I talked about with the previous caller. Like, I don't really give a whole lot of people credit for being able to rate, for, I don't give people credit for bet folding for value on the river, raise folding for value on the river. I mean, that's like, that 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 I really don't give credit for. But you're right in the way that we have to think about this is that it's not just what does he have that we beat, it's he has to call. So if he raises with some hands for value that actually fold that you beat, then you could make a theoretical case that it's just a call. Now, I don't believe that in this particular case, that he's raised folding any hand, to be honest with you. Right. Um, I, I'm with you that it, if the dude raises, he's pretty much calling off. Right. So if we went with that assumption, then you really only lose to Jack Nine of Clubs. And maybe once in a while, if you're super unlucky, Jack Nine of Hearts right that somehow started right. that um and you're beating queen 10 again i go back what you i just on the turn i just feel like a lot of sets i'm trying to think about what else he raises here because really that's what all, all that, that's the only thing that 10 changes right in terms of non-straights is it fills queen 10 i i still can't i don't know if a guy is calling a set on the turn to raise the river on such a wet board it's queen eight four seven two tone. I would I, I kind of very I, I would find it very surprising. I didn't even know the result. I talk through it. Go back, flip back to the turn. Use the replayer on the YouTube. So if he doesn't have sets because of that reason, then really it's just like okay. Uh, how much queen ten? If we assume he's going to always call off with queen ten, how much queen ten does he have? And uh, how much jack nine of clubs does he have? And when I say by how much queen ten. You know, you can look and do the combinatorics. So obviously, there's nine combos of queen ten because there's three and three left. But you have to then think of it like, well, how often is queen ten going to raise the river of those nine combos? Well, if it's twenty percent of the time, right? You're at like two combos, and if he's always calling off with queen ten, then you're losing to one combo or one and a half combos and you're beating two combos if it always calls off. But it can get really close if you really want to drill down. And I don't think that it's hard to really think about that that detailed at the time. It's probably going to be more of a feel thing. But I think it's probably close. I mean, I think you can kind of get on board. I mean, I always sort of uh, think that uh, I, I, I push value. And I think that you and I can agree that if you start to say, Nate, that there are some raise folds for value here, I think I could say that maybe this is just a call. If you don't think that there are raise folds from your opponent for value, then then I can get on more of a jamming. Right. And um, that's kind of where I'm at. I just don't think this guy's ever raising to fold. Um, so I do jam here. And I, I do think that there's some people, a subset of players who don't, raise sets waiting for the flush draw to break out do you think so really like like a plo I play i think i do think so i see it happen enough where people wait for the safe card or relatively safe cards before they raise which i mean that obviously is going to change the equation like if you think he has sets then it's more of a jam right i just thought right. that like sets would raise turn a lot no that that makes complete sense mm. i i only gave him pieces of sets like if he has three combos of four, four, he raises two, mm -hmm. cause one. Right. But this is how you do like slivers of partials. Like you could say like he's got, let's say he's got all the Jack nine of clubs. I mean, that's the easiest one to look at, right? That's one full combo. Let's right. say he's got one quarter of Jack nine of hearts. So you're losing to like 1.25 combos, right? Total of hands. Yep. And then if you start to say, well, you know, there's nine combos of queen 10, he has 20% of them, that's like 1.8 combos. And then he's got sets, like maybe one combo of set, that's like three combos. That's how you'd sort of look at this. And then it would get even more complex if there was a raise full button, which I don't think that there is. So that's why you jammed, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So And we jam, and he actually snaps us off, and he has 4-4. Four, four. Ah, wow. That is amazing. I wouldn't have thought about that because, like I said, I didn't know the result. And I was just kind of talking through on the on the turn. I'm very surprised that four four did not race turn and now and now raises the river. Yep. Yeah, I was I was pretty shocked to see him not raise the turn and then raise the river. It's a weird. It's just a yeah. weird way to look at hands. I think in a way. 
It is. It definitely is. I mean, you will see this sometimes too with like PLO, but then you're not going to see somebody raise at the river when <laughs> three almost straights come out. Um, or sometimes you'll see this double ward when you only have one side, like with top set, I've been playing a lot of double ward PLO, but yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I think one of the most important things though, I think that we can take away from this hand is what I keep harping on. Cause I do see a lot of people in the live chat, not just here, but just in general say, if we bet or if we raise, what worse is going to call when somebody takes the action of raising the river, they're almost never folding if it's value. That's what you can take away from this. And that's really the key to figuring out whether or not this is a shove or not, right? Right, 100%. So, all right, Nate. Awesome call. Right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mark. Yep. All right.